If you'd like to make your NFL games a little more interesting, you've come to the right place. It's the Even Money Podcast with Ross Tucker and Steve Fezzik. Yeah, Vegas, baby, Vegas. It is the Even Money Podcast presented by DraftKings, that champ series thing they have going on right now. The casino app, champ series, use the code Ross. Crazy. Might even mention it more a little bit later in the show. Check me out on social, please, at Ross Tucker NFL, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Those of you that listen to the Ross Tucker podcast know that's how you can become the Spread the Word winner via social media each week. Then you can also follow us at Ross Tucker Pod, which is how you get the knowledge immediately when any of these shows are posted. You know the highlight clips from each show are posted. You can check them out at youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL as well. We've got the DraftKings Best Ball Contest going on the Fantasy Feast podcast. For those of you that want to go against me and Joe in a best ball draft, things are happening. We are less than a month away from NFL training camps opening, which is why in a few minutes Steve Fezzik will tell you exactly what three games you should strongly consider making a wager on now. Now, and we'll also get my boy Kiev O'Neal from the Odds Breakers podcast. He's a stud. He's got projections on the Pythagorean win total for these teams now that there's 17 games. This is what I like. I like when other people do a lot of research put a lot of time into it, and then just give me the answers. It's like high school and college all over again. It is amazing. Usually the guy with the answers is Steve Fezzik. At Fezzik Sports on Twitter and only at Fezzik Sports. Last week he was dropping bombs about mountain towns in Colorado being the ideal vacation place. People are sending me emails and tweets being like, oh, Breckenridge, oh, Aspen. Like, don't, don't, don't come to me. Go to Steve. Steve, hello. How are you? Well, I'm kind of sore because I continued my hiking post-Colorado. I just climbed up to Griffith Peak and back. My wife and my son, no problem. I felt like I was crawling to the summit, 11,000-foot mountain here in southern Nevada. But I made it. Just took most of the day. Hey, that reminds me, Steve, before I forget. I just found out I think I'll be doing a game at Nevada this year, not UNLV, at uh, Nevada up in – that's in Reno, right? Yes. Uh, Reno University of airport? Nevada, Reno. Can I fly in there? Does Reno have a decent airport? Reno does have a, a decent airport. It is circled by mountains, so um, it can be a little tricky on the approach in the winter time. But, um, in fact, most people that go to Tahoe – fly into the Reno airport. It's about a little over an hour and 10 minute drive. The Tahoe airport so small. Got it. All right. Well, that's in October. So I think hopefully I will be okay. Uh, Kiev, you live in Arizona, correct? That's correct. Chandler, Arizona. All right. So what is the ideal vacation spot for you? Since Steve's, Steve is convinced that a mountain town in Colorado is the ideal vacation last, uh, last weekend. Last week well, when, when you're surrounded by mountains, I mean, that's a two hour drive for me. So <laughs> I feel like getting my hiking boots on like Steve, which is very impressive, by the way, making it up 11,000 feet, Steve, uh, you know, not too far of a trip for me. But I just got back from Key West uh, about a week and a half ago. And that place is just a trip, man. It's almost like you're in a different world in Key West. They have their own rules. Some of those bars on the third floor you might want to ask about before you go up there. And uh, they have the best food and great fishing. It was just a fantastic time. I know I went from summer, but going from 115 down to 95 isn't so bad when you're used to it. Oh, 115, dude. It is 94 degrees right now in central Pennsylvania, and I feel like I am sitting on the sun right now. (laughs) I'll tell you this, man. The humidity does make a difference, and thank goodness we're only at about 100 today. So huge difference, right? 
But, uh, you know, it depends. What do you want? A, a, an oven that's extra hot or a, a wet oven that's lukewarm? You know, I lived in the Midwest so many years and it, sometimes it doesn't even matter, my man. But I'll tell you this. When I do visit the Midwest, I, I, I feel like I sweat more than I ever do because now I'm used to being in the dry air. Right, right, right. Exactly. Yeah, you guys are both kind of out there in the desert. Um, speaking of that. It's probably part of the reason why you guys are both very good at what you do as professional gamblers. We're going to get to Steve's three week one bets. And by the way, why Vegas is about to absolutely explode. But I wanted to start, Kiev, with you. And I wanted to start with the NBA since that's going on. People know we are primarily an NFL betting podcast. We do dabble in the other sports. We dabble in college football for sure just to stay relevant, just so people have something else they can bet on if they're not looking to put their money into futures right now. Give me a, give me an NBA bet. I don't care if it's a prop. <laughs> I don't care if it's, you know, Eastern Conference, Western Conference, anything you're feeling really good about right now, Kiev? Yeah, absolutely. And before I forget, for, thank you for having me on this show, uh, back on this show. You know, Even Money is one of my go-to podcasts. And why not? Because you have one of the best NFL investors in Fezzik Sports over here, and you have one of the best NFL analysts and insiders with Mr. Ross Tucker. So thank you very much for having me back, guys. Yeah, I, I looked at the NBA a little bit today, and here's the thing. you got Trey Young, right, the star of the Atlanta Hawks. He's a little bit banged up. I saw the tweak. He stepped on the ref's foot. He's got a little bit of a, a bone bruise in his foot. But I'll tell you right now, I would be absolutely shocked if he doesn't see the court tonight. I don't think he would let the coach, McMillan, uh, sit him out this game. Backs to the wall, two in one. In this situation, that questionable status, man, I've, see, I've seen kids his age forget about the pain and just play a fantastic game. You know, Atlanta Hawks, great all year at home. 26 and 16 against the spread at home, 62%, while the Milwaukee Bucks are 18 and 25 against the spread as a road team, which is 42%. But instead of the whole game, I'm kind of looking in the derivative market a little bit because I think the quarter zone or whatever they give Trey Young, I think it's going to hold up for a while, but I, I'm not sure if I can trust him the full game. So I kind of like them at the half because, A, their backs are, are against the wall. You're going to get about three and a half to four points depending upon what book you're looking at. And I'd be shocked if the team sees Trey Young, you know, the rest of his teammates, see him go out there if they're not going to give it an absolute explosive go in the first half. So my first play would be to take the Hawks at plus three and a half or plus four. So uh, I already made that play and I, I feel pretty good about it. And that's in the first half. Correct. Got it. All right. Hawks in the first half. I like that bet. Steve, any thoughts? Any yeah, I like there? it as well. The logic's very sound. Just at the starting point, I think if you talk to all the experts, it's pretty clear cut. Milwaukee's about six and a half to seven points better than an average team. That would be, that's my power rating. That's what most people's power ratings would be. So what's going on here? Milwaukee's laying six and a half to seven for the game. Are we saying that Atlanta, with a somewhat compromised Trey Young, is a worse than average team with no home court advantage? That's ludicrous. Clearly, they're a little bit better than an average team with a banged up Trey Young, and they have a, a decent home court advantage with the crowd back, even though they got rid of like the stained glass window at, at for the logo in midcourt that I loved. But uh, the bottom line is that the numbers already are supporting an Atlanta play, but now. Our biggest concern, as Kiev says, is that we might have an issue with Trey Young as the game goes on. Why not play it early in the game? I think a first quarter plus two, a first half. I just looked at the screen. There's one place that does have a plus four. Makes so much sense. I like that. I think it's a good investment. Love it. All right. So we're already off to a good start. And by the way, Kiev, thank you very much for the kind words about the show. It's uncanny how often people mention that or I see it online somewhere I think people just like the things I hear, okay? People like that we're only 30 minutes. People like that we get to our bets each week. 
and people like that we review our bets from the week before. Like we have credibility. Like we say what we lost and what we won. So people get that right away before they go on to get, you know, our picks for that week. So I appreciate you saying that. It's very interesting how many people in the industry like you talk about our show as being one of their go-tos. And after the show, you might have to tell me what it is that goes on on the third floor in Key West, because <laughs> I am interested in that. So, <laughs> well, if you listen, I, I touch on it a little bit in our in my latest podcast from last week. So, oh, nice, Kiev, nice. That was a professional <laughs> tease right there, ladies hey, man, and gentlemen. You let, you, professional you let me tease. <laughs> um, all right. So, do you have an NBA prop, or should we move on to the Pythagorean stuff? Well, you know, I do have a prop, and I didn't take it yet because I want to see if this moves up a little bit. I'm looking at Chris Middleton here. Had a fantastic game. I think it was like 38 points or something like that when they beat the Hawks. He's been one of the most inconsistent uh, players, in my opinion. He's just so hot and cold. And in this situation, I mean, the Hawks' game plan, you got to think – that they, they're going to look at him and try to key on him more. Now, I don't know if that's going to give Giannis a few more points himself, but I just like betting on inconsistency. So you got him right now around 23 and 24 points. His average in the playoffs is 23 and a half, and his average during the regular season is about 20.5. So I'm going to see if that ticks up just a little bit, and I'd like to slam the under on Chris Middleton here. I think that he's going to be keyed in not – not quite there yet, but I'm close, guys. Got it. Steve, thoughts? Yeah, I like it as well. At some point, Atlanta's going to send around a memo and say, you know what, when Giannis is dribbling 17 feet from the basket, you don't have to come up to him. He's You <laughs> want him to take that shot. And as they sag back and pay less attention to Giannis, obviously Middleton beat them. So paying more attention to him and Drew Holiday has been a no show of late. I can't believe that's going to happen throughout the playoffs. And just the bottom line, the deeper we go into the playoffs, the more likely that we have a game. And we saw it with the Clippers and Phoenix, where it just goes way under the total that could happen tonight. And if that happens, it impacts all of the players scoring. I fully endorse a Middleton under the 23 and a half tonight. Um. Keeping it rolling, let's get to the NFL now. And, uh, Kiev, it's interesting. It, it's, it's perfect timing to have you on. A couple weeks ago, Steve was on that legendary vacation, and my buddy Nick Costos was on, and he talked about the Pythagorean win expectation. Last week, I asked Steve about it because I had never heard of it before. And you actually did a deep dive on extrapolating the Pythagorean win uh, breakdown for 17 games. Can you explain what you did, the work that you put in? Yeah, absolutely. And when you look at the Pythagorean win total, it's just based upon the right triangle. You know, it, it, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, right? And it, it's kind of the formula to figure out the difference between two points. You're looking for the side C. And it kind of works out when you're looking at points scored and points against uh, when you're looking at any sport, really, there's different exponents and different arguments about it. But the truth is, let's look at the extreme situation. A team can go 17 and 0 and win every game by one point, right? I mean, yeah. is that a 17 win team if that happens, or were they just uh, that guy that won the Powerball lucky, right? So, I mean, that happens in football. And there, on the other side end of it, a team can lose every game by one point and be 0-16, but would you look at that situation as that they're really an 0-16 team? You know, as sports bettors, we got to look at what happened throughout the game and why and what the real strength of these teams are, and that's how we develop power ratings, and that's how we place our bets, you know, efficiencies-type systems as well. So what the Pythagorean wins do is it normalizes it, you know. It tells you that this team actually was outscored last year, and they happened to have an 11-win record. You know, there's a few teams like that. And I like to talk about the outliers, right? And so when it comes to the outliers, I did an article at theoddsbreakers.com. The biggest outlier, and I do adjust for 17 games, basically. I just uh, take their points scored, defensive points against, and add that back. 
with adding a, a function to their actual wins. The Kansas City Chiefs, their expected win total is only 10.85 from last year when they actually had a 14.88 adjusted for 17 games actual wins. That's about a four-game difference. If you think about what happened with the Chiefs, they went 7-10-1 and against the spread, but their last 10 games, they were burning sports bettors' money. One nine and one against the spread their last 11 games won a ton of close games now obviously there's other factors Mahomes is clutch but they weren't quite a 14 win 13 win type team last year the Cleveland Browns is number two they only had an 8.02 expected wins compared to their 11.69 adjusted win total uh, expected win total last year there were two outliers in the Cleveland game, though. They do they did get blown out by uh, Baltimore, and Cleveland also got blown out by Pittsburgh. So I think they're more of a nine, but still they overachieved last year. The Buffalo Bills overachieved a little bit. Their actual uh, expected wins were 11.05, and the Tennessee Titans were uh, uh, overachievers as well by a little bit. 9.19 expected wins compared to 11.69 adjusted for 17 games. So you got to look at those teams and say, well, hey, they overachieve for whatever reason, but you also got to factor in the strength of schedule. Okay, so there's a lot there. I guess my first question is, I understand that the point of the of the game is to win and that the point of the game is to score as many points as you can and prevent the other team from scoring as many points as you can. But I feel like there are times in different games where maybe they're behind by a lot, so the coach decides not to show certain things, or maybe they're behind by seven, so he goes for the touchdown when he could get a field goal, right? You know, st stuff like that. How does the – I mean – is it fair to say, Kiev, you think that that stuff all washes out in the end? Because in my mind, I always think similar to what I say about the spread sometimes, right? Which is that the coaches aren't coaching against the spread. They're just coaching to win the game. The coaches are not coaching for the Pythagorean wins. They're just coaching that situation at that time, which I think affects – in I would say at least a handful of games a year, how many points they score or allow. Yes, absolutely. But in the larger the sample size, the more that wipes away, Ross. But you also have to remember that it works the other way as well. You know, maybe the Kansas City Chiefs could have scored that extra touchdown against somebody, and they didn't. You know, in many cases, that's called garbage time. We try to take away, take out garbage time when it comes to some of the efficiency stats that you use. Some of the great websites that do that is Football Outsiders. You know, they do a fantastic job with their DVOA, you know, taking out some of that garbage. And that's what you have to look at. You know, but, you know, it, it's all, th that's more of an in-game type betting type situation here. When you're talking about an aggregated amount of points throughout the whole year, you have a pretty decent sized sample, especially if you look back a few years as well. And uh, you can make some decent judgments of that. But to be honest with you, there is no perfect stat, Ross, and pretty much everything can be picked apart. Steve, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's solid to take a look at bottom line is how many points did you score? How many did you give up? And every time you have a 35 point differential, that's worth the win. So you tell me a team outscored their opponents by 70 points, that should have been a 10 and 6 team. If they go 12 and 4, they're overrated. If they go 8 and 8, they're underrated. Now, Kia brought up a fascinating point that these outliers, when you've got a Cleveland team that gets bombed by Baltimore, all right, and they lose by 50, you probably should say, all right, you know, after you lose by 30, really the last 20 points, it wasn't your day, whatever. You shouldn't count it as a minus 50 against that team. So you can make some tweaks and adjustments. But I know that um, people in baseball have tried to do that where they say, all right, if a team loses 17 to one, I should grade that like a nine to one loss. And as it turns out, it's actually better to use the 17, I believe, <laughs> long term as a predicting model of how a team's can do. So, it's, you know, it's pretty darn strong that uh, don't look at the final win-loss record of a team. Look at points scored, points against. It's really interesting. So what are the teams, Kiev, you said 
are overvalued or overrated again? So the overachievers, and I don't want to use overrated, Ross, because we don't know how that's going to factor into what the market says on a game by game basis. I just want to say how, if they overachieved or not, so I can kind of think of what they're being set with as a season win total and how I'm going to approach looking at this team in the 2021 NFL season. The four teams are the Kansas City Chiefs, number one, that overachieved, the Cleveland Browns, number two, the Buffalo Bills, number three, and the Tennessee Titans were number four. Um, there's underachievers, and that's important too. The Atlanta Falcons, uh, burning sharp people's money for years, it was the number one <laughs> over underachiever there. Expected wins of 7.92 compared to their 4.25 with the points that they scored. Very inconsistent. The Jaguars were number two. The Houston Texans were number three. And the Philadelphia Eagles were number four. If you remember, Houston just could not win a game. Every time they had the edge, they would give up a big touchdown. Games against the Titans and a few other teams like that. Love it. Love it. And so what um, what you do is, does that have an impact? Have you already bet some of the season win totals as a result, Kiev? Yeah, I bet some of those season win totals, and there's a few different ways of looking at it. The best way is to probably power rate every single game, and then you have your lines and you come up with the percentage and you add up the percentage to see exactly what the wins are. Or you could just go by what Vegas says, you know, because Vegas, obviously, the market does things that you're going to miss. You can look at all the spreads, turn them into percentages, and add up every single win by doing that. And then you have an actual win total. I also like to factor in the you know what, what these teams have gained, what they've lost. New coach, new quarterbacks are the number one and number two thing, in my opinion. Uh, changing quarterbacks, huge. And what they did last year compared to what they're expected to do sometimes gives you an edge over the market. But, you know, in many cases, uh, the market already knows that. So uh, you got to, you know, go through with the fine tooth comb. I did bet a few season win totals based on it. Awesome. You know, one key point to be made here is that oftentimes these teams that we're referencing because they were clutch and won so many games, people love betting on those teams and they get a whole lot of support. So there is no hurry to fade Kansas city, to fade Buffalo or to fade Cleveland this year. Money has trickled in on all those teams slowly. Kansas city started with a 12 season win. Here come the 12 and halves. Buffalo 10 and a half. Up to 11. Wouldn't surprise me if you get an 11 and a half. And Cleveland is, has been a betters darling over the past four years, even when they didn't win any games. Now that they are a playoff team. So I think these are three bets you may well consider making 10 minutes before the NFL season starts. Very interesting because as we get closer, more and more people are going to be betting the over on them. And we already see a bias in the over-under markets. If you look at the average over-under being dealt right now, it's 8.6. And you say, well, that's just a small difference. It should be 8.5 in a 17-game schedule. And it actually should be 8.4 because with a 10-minute overtimes, we'll probably see two games end in a tie this year. 8.4 versus 8.6 sounds very, very small. It's actually more than significant to the point that if you bet every team under – you probably make just a little bit of money, even with the big. Good stuff, guys. Um, speaking of good stuff, Keeps is amazing. I've been a customer for years. I'm trying to keep my hair. Kiev and Steve are hanging pretty tough there. But for all I know, they've been taking Keeps for years. Maybe they're smart <laughs> like I am, and they've been taking Keeps because here's the deal. I used to have to go to the doctor, and then he would write me a prescription for the pill. Then I would have to go to the drugstore to pick it up. And then I have to go to the drugstore to get the topical solution you put on your hair, the Rogaine or whatever that you put on your hair. Here's the deal. You can get both of those directly from Keeps. That's what's amazing. You don't have to go to a doctor. You don't have to go to a pharmacy. Just get sent to your house. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash even money. To receive your first month of treatment for free, that's k e e p s dot com slash even money to get your first month free. Keeps dot com slash even money. Speaking of money, Steve, you've got three week one NFL bets you think are money right now. What are they? 
Absolutely. And I have made these and I'm going to make them uh, more add to my positions right after this podcast ends. Number one, Jacksonville minus two and a half at Houston. Uh, Based upon my numbers, I make Jacksonville a six point favorite on a neutral site. There is no way Houston gets three for home field. It's going to be a very limited home field advantage for Houston. This line's going to close three and a half. I'm going to lay two and a half with Jacksonville. I like it. Okay. So you're already accounting. So that's, that's what you always talk about, Steve. It's not whether or not you win the bet. It's whether or not you beat the final number. And I'll make a bold prediction. I'm going to give three plays here. I would bet even money that all three of these numbers, you're not going to get any of them come September right before the games kick off. Love it. What else you got? Number two, Buffalo minus six hosting Pittsburgh. I make this line just under six on a neutral Buffalo's going to have a solid home field advantage. Nobody likes Pittsburgh. And the narrative's out there that their O-line stinks now. And everybody is high on Buffalo. This line's going to be closed in seven after eight. Everyone's going to be teasing Buffalo at that point. Instead of teasing them after the fact, let's lay some six right now. Okay. All right. Laying the six on Buffalo. What's your third one? Third one, Sunday night football, Rams minus seven against Chicago. There's no real support from the Sharps for the Bears. Uh, The feeling is that Rams absolutely are going to be a contender with a huge quarterback upgrade. And the bottom line on this one, I make the Rams just less, a little bit less than a seven-point favorite on a neutral. Throw in home field, they go up to nine. And further, this is a Sunday night football game, which is going to bring out the public. Week one, are you crazy? Everyone is going to want to bet on the Rams in this game. That's the sort of game you want to get ahead of the public. The public hasn't bet yet. Bet the Rams now before the line inflates. Kiev, your thoughts on those three games and uh, Steve's thought on the line movement for those games? Well, I do have a question for Steve. Are you factoring in Deshaun Watson playing that first game? or are I, you? I think he has no chance to play week one. We can have a conversation, will he come back at some point during the course of the season, but uh, I think at a minimum he's going to be suspended for a period of time. Okay. No, I, I first of all, I agree with all of what you said for the line move. So no matter what you do, even if, the line, if, even if you don't like it, but you know that line's moving, you can always come back on the other side, especially if you're crossing those key numbers of seven. So I 100% agree. And the Rams one, you know, I am a Bear fan, but I'll tell you right now, Matt Stafford's been playing on some really bad teams against the Bears, and now he finally gets an all-star team. There's a good chance that he can put one on the Bears here in L.A. I think everybody's going to be very excited to see them the bears are not going to be ready yet andy dalton's first game you know and, and they're going to try him out he knows that he's got justin fields crawling up his back i think that just makes him a little bit more nervous or antsy i am concerned for the bears this so uh, i definitely agree with that one and don't forget there's going to be some that are going to look at series history and say hey the rams have struggled against the bears i don't care yeah the rams when it's 20 degrees and Goff is the quarterback playing in chicago in december play poorly against the Rams. And as such, if this game was in December in Chicago, I wouldn't bet the Rams. That's not the case. The trend is meaningless to me. All right. You know what isn't meaningless? Having you guys on this show. Absolutely awesome stuff. Kiev, you are welcome on anytime. Make sure you check him out on Twitter. It's at The Odds Breakers. And check out his show. I've been on it. Uh, I don't know when that was, Kiev, but you can check it out. I was on NFL some draft, maybe. <laughs> oh, yeah, NFL draft. Yes, check it out. Kiev does a terrific job as well. Love having him on the show. He will be on again. Other than that, good luck, everybody. Hope you guys win some money. Thanks for listening to the Even Money Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, the Fantasy Feast, Business of Sports, and the College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. A lot of times on the show, I mentioned DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100 Gambler or in Indiana. 109 with it. By the way, 
if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, doesn't always, sometimes it does. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough, and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit. 